The House will come to order. Prayer by the Chaplain. As one of my favorite Irish proverbs states, say a little and say it well. Let us pray. Dear Holy God, we pause to acknowledge you, the great author of life. We thank you for our blessings and we pray for this day for wisdom upon that work that we do today. May the strength of God pilot us, may the power of God preserve us, may the wisdom of God instruct us, may the hand of God protect us, may the way of God direct us, may the shield of God defend us, may the host of God guard us against the snares of the evil ones and temptations of the world. May God be with us, may God be before us, may God be in us this day forevermore. Amen. And then I have a little Irish, another Irish proverb on this St. Patrick's Day. Although this is a cliche one, it is fitting since many of our friends in this body have not seen each other for quite some time. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Amen. The chaplain for today is Representative Joe McDonald, District 29A, Delano, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move a recess to the call of the chair. Representative Winkler moves a recess to the call of the chair. Uh, members, we intend to take a short recess to hear a statement from some members of the body, and then we will reconvene in just a couple of minutes. Uh, all those members in favor of the Winkler motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The House is in recess. speakers, uh, Madam Speaker and members, uh, I borrow your time today for the dignity of America and for a moment of reflection. I urge members of both parties, Minnesotans of every race and creed from every corner of our state to join me. I speak specifically today in denouncing the acts of violence down in Atlanta, Georgia, that occurred yesterday. I ask for your prayers for the victims of those horrific acts of violence. Eight have been reportedly killed after shootings at an Asian American spa. From all the updates gathered so far, it was not a random act. Separate and differing businesses were targeted. Six of those killed were Asian women. The targeted businesses, is, uh, businesses were workplaces where the majority of employees were Asian. There have been increasing acts of violence against Asian Americans, some even elderly Asian Americans, targeted by unforgivable acts of violence. From Stop AAPI Hate, since the start of the pandemic, 3,800 hate-related incidents in all 50 states has occurred. Some perpetrators even boasting on social media about the sick acts that they were going to commit against Asian Americans just moments before heading out to the part of town or neighborhood where fellow, fellow Asian Americans resides, shops, and works. All this seemingly rooted in the characterization 
of the COVID-19 flu as the Chinese virus and the long history and culture in some parts of this country of the overly sexualization of Asian women, stirring the prejudices of far too many. I speak today in denouncing the acts of violence down in Atlanta. My fellow Minnesota Asian Pacific Caucus members and I call on all leaders to denounce the rising anti-Asian hate in our country. Silence amidst this growing surge against fellow Asian Americans is unacceptable. If you consider us your friends, neighbors, and fellow countrymen, use your voices and power to strike down such bigotry. Let's all be on the right side of history, as it will always bend towards justice, just as Dr. Martin Luther King and his moral universe. To all the young Asian American boys and girls at home, many calling me or emailing me concerned about this issue within the past couple of months, some too scared to go to school. I say this to you, the hatred and pain of prejudice you see, hear, and feel, that is not America. Your leader standing here in this chamber and throughout this great land refuses to let this hatred and senseless violence be America. Your land, as they say, from sea to shining sea, welcomes and protects all, regardless of race or creed. Although our America may not be perfect, I promise to your young hearts and minds this. We are striving each and every day to form a more perfect union for you. Those of us here representing you, standing on the shoulders of the righteousness of America, we will tear down the pain of prejudice. With that, I ask for a moment of silence for the eight victims down in Atlanta and the countless Asian Americans targeted throughout this country in the past year since this pandemic has washed up on our shores. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, please rise to join Representative Zhang in a moment of silence for the victims of hate crimes. Thank you, Representative Zhang. The House will come to order. Members, uh, when the Chief Clerk calls the roll today to establish a quorum, please state your name, your location, and that you are present. Members using the remote voting technology, please also press the green or yes button. Akam. Akam. Minnetonka, present. Akam Minnetonka, present. Ag Badge. Ag Minneapolis, present. Ag Badge, Minneapolis, present. Ackland. Ackland, St. Paul, present. Ackland, St. Paul, present. Albright. Albright, Prior Lake, present. Albright, Prior Lake, present. Anderson. Anderson. Backer. Um, Backer, Des Moines, present. Backer, Des Moines, present. Bonner. Bonner, Maple Grove, present. Bonner, Maple Grove, present. Barr. Barr, East Bethel, present. Barr, East Bethel, present. Baker. Baker, Wilmer, present. Baker, Wilmer, present. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, St. Paul, present. Becker, Finn, St. Paul, present. Bennett. Bennett Albert Lee, present. Bennett Albert Lee, present. Berg. Berg Burnsville, present. Berg Burnsville, present. Bernardi. Bernardi New Brighton, present. Bernardi New Brighton, present. Beerman. Beerman Apple Valley, present. Beerman Apple Valley, present. Bliss. Bliss St. Paul, present. Bliss St. Paul, present. Bull. Bull. 
Bo. No. Bo Chan Hassan present. Bo Chan Hassan present. Bolden. Bolden, Rochester, present. Bolden, Rochester, present. Burkle. Burkle, Skagen Township, present. Burkle, Skagen Township, present. Carlson. Carlson, Bloomington, present. Carlson, Bloomington, present. Christensen. Christensen, Stillwater, present. Christensen, Stillwater, present. Daniels. Daniels, St. Paul, present. Daniels, St. Paul, present. Doubt. Doubt, St. Paul, present. Davids. Davids, Zambroda, present. Davids, Zambroda, present. Daphne. Daphne, Minneapolis, present. Daphne, Minneapolis, present. Damoth. Damoth, Cold Spring, present. Damoth, Cold Spring, present. Detmer. Detmer, Forest Lake, present. Detmer, Forest Lake, present. Draskowski. Draskowski, Winona, present. Draskowski, Winona, present. Eklund. Eklund, St. Paul, present. Eklund, St. Paul, present. Edelson. Edelson, Edina, present. Edelson, Edina, present. Elkins. Elkins, St. Paul, present. Elkins, St. Paul, present. Erickson. Erickson, St. Paul, present. Erickson, St. Paul, present. Feist. Feist, New Brighton, present. Feist, New Brighton, present. Fisher. Fisher, Maplewood, present. Fisher, Maplewood, present. Frankie. Frankie, St. Paul Park, present. Frankie, St. Paul Park, present. Franzen. Franzen, St. Paul, present. Franzen, St. Paul, present. Frazier. Frazier, New Hope, present. Frazier, New Hope, present. Frederick. Frederick, St. Paul, present. Frederick, St. Paul, present. Freiburg. Freiburg, Golden Valley, present. Freiburg, Golden Valley, present. Garofalo. Garofalo, Farmington, present. Garofalo, Farmington, present. Gomez. Gomez, Minneapolis, present. <coughs> Gomez, Minneapolis, present. Green. <coughs> Green, Boston, present. Green, Boston, present. Greenman. Greenman, St. Paul, present. Greenman, St. Paul, present. Grossel. Grossel, Clearbrook, present. Grossel, Clearbrook, present. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, Glencoe, present. Where did he say? Grunhagen, Glencoe, present. Haley. Haley, St. Paul, present. Hamilton. Hamilton, St. Paul, present. Hamilton, St. Paul, present. Hanson R. Hanson R., St. Paul, present. Hanson R., St. Paul, present. Hanson J. Hanson J., Burnsville, present. Hanson J., Burnsville, present. Hassan. Hassan, Minneapolis, present. Hassan, Minneapolis, present. Hausman. Hausman, St. Paul, present. Hausman, St. Paul, present. Heinrich. Heinrich, St. Paul, present. Heinrich, St. Paul, present. Heinzman. Heinzman. St. Paul, present. Heinzman, St. Paul, present. Her. Her, St. Paul, present. Her toss. Hertos. Hollins. Hollins, St. Paul, present. Hollins, St. Paul, present. Hornstein. Hornstein, Minneapolis, present. Hornstein, Minneapolis, present. Howard. Howard, Richfield, present. Howard, Richfield, present. Hewitt. Hewitt, Rosemont, present. Hewitt, Rosemont, present. Igo. I go. I go, St. Paul, present. I go, St. Paul, present. Johnson. Johnson, St. Paul, present. Jordan. Jordan, Minneapolis, present. Jordan, Minneapolis, present. Jurgens. Jurgens, Cottage Grove, present. Jurgens, Cottage Grove, present. Keeler. Keeler, St. Paul, present. Keeler, St. Paul, present. Keel. Keel, Hammond Township, present. Keel, Hammond Township, present. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, Plymouth, present. Cleavorn, Plymouth, present. Cagle. Cagle, Spring Lake Park, present. Cagle, Spring Lake Park, present. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, Eden Prairie, present. Katiza Watoon, Eden Prairie, present. Kosnick. Kosnick, St. Paul, present. Kosnick, St. Paul, present. Cresha. Cresha, Little Falls, present. Cresha, Little Falls, present. Lee. Lee, Minneapolis, present. Lee, Minneapolis, present. Liebling. Liebling, Rochester, present. Liebling, Rochester, present. Lily. Lily, St. Paul, present. Lily, St. Paul, present. Lippert. Lippert, St. Paul, present. Lippert, St. Paul, present. Lisligard. 
Liss Lagarde, St. Paul present. Liss Lagarde, St. Paul present. Long. Long, Minneapolis present. Long, Minneapolis present. Lucero. Lucero. Lucero, Ramsey County present. Lucero, Ramsey County present. Lewick. Lewick. Mariani. Mariani, St. Paul present. Mariani, St. Paul present. Marquardt. Marquardt, St. Paul present. Marquardt, St. Paul present. Mason. Mason Egan present. Mason Egan present. McDonald. McDonald, Delano present. McDonald, Delano present. Mecklen. Mecklen Becker present. Mecklen Becker present. Miller. Miller, St. Paul present. Moeller. Moeller, Shoreview present. Moeller, Shoreview present. Moran. Moran. Moran, St. Paul present. Moran, St. Paul present. Morrison. Morrison, Deep Haven present. Morrison, Deep Haven present. Mortensen. Mortensen, St. Paul present. Mortensen, St. Paul present. Mueller. Mueller, St. Paul present. Munson. Munson. Murphy. Murphy, Hermantown present. Murphy, Hermantown present. Nash, excused. Nelson M. Nelson M. Brooklyn Park present. Nelson M. Brooklyn Park present. Nelson N. Nelson N. Clover Township present. Nelson N. Clover Township present. New Brindley. New Brindley, St. Paul present. Noor. Noor, Minneapolis present. Noor, Minneapolis present. Novotny. Novotny, St. Paul present. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll, Sartell present. O'Driscoll, Sartell present. Olson B. Olson B. St. Paul present. Olson B. St. Paul present. Olson L. Olson L. Duluth present. Olson L. Duluth present. O'Neill. O'Neill, Maple Lake present. O'Neill, Maple Lake present. Pulowski. Pulowski, Winona present. Pulowski, Winona present. Petersburg. Petersburg, Wasika present. Petersburg, Wasika present. Far. Far, St. Paul present. Far, St. Paul present. Pearson. Pearson, Rochester Township, present. Pearson, Rochester Township, present. Pinto. Pinto, St. Paul, present. Pinto, St. Paul, present. Poston. Poston, St. Paul, present. Poston, St. Paul, present. Pryor. Pryor, Minnetonka, present. Pryor, Minnetonka, present. Quam. Quam, Byron, present. Quam, Byron, present. Raleigh. Raleigh, St. Paul, present. Raleigh, St. Paul, present. Rasmussen. Rasmussen, St. Paul present. Rasmussen, St. Paul present. Ryer. Ryer, Egan present. Ryer, Egan present. Richardson. Richardson, Mendota Heights present. Richardson, Mendota Heights present. Robbins. Robbins, St. Paul present. Sandell. Sandell, Woodbury present. Sandell, Woodbury present. Sandstead. Sandstead, Hibbing present. Sandstead, Hibbing present. Schumacher. <clears throat> Schumacher, Laverne present. Schumacher, Laverne present. Schultz. Schultz, Duluth present. Schultz, Duluth present. Scott. Scott, Andover present. Scott, Andover present. Stevenson. Stevenson, St. Paul present. <clears throat> Stevenson, St. Paul present. Sundin. Sundin, Carleton County present. Sundin, Carleton County present. Swazinski. Swazinski. Tice. Tice, St. Paul, present. Tice, St. Paul, present. Thompson. Thompson, St. Paul, present. Thompson, St. Paul, present. Torkelson. Torkelson, St. Paul, present. Torkelson, St. Paul, present. Erdahl. <clears throat> Erdahl, St. Paul, present. Erdahl, St. Paul, present. Vang. Vang, Brooklyn Center, present. Vang, Brooklyn Center, present. Waslowick. Waslowick, St. Paul, present. Waslowick, St. Paul, present. West. West, Blaine, present. West, Blaine, present. Winkler. Winkler, St. Paul, present. Wolgamont. 
Olgamot St. Paul present. Zhang J, excused. Zhang T, Zhang T present. Joachim. Joachim Hopkins present. Joachim Hopkins present. Speaker Hartman. Speaker Hartman, St. Paul, present. Anderson. Anderson, St. Paul, present. Anderson, St. Paul, present. Hertos. Hertos. Lewick. Lewick, St. Paul, present. Lewick, St. Paul, present. Munson. Munson, Lincoln Township, present. Munson, Lincoln Township, present. Swazinski. Swazinski. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. <clears throat> Journal of the House, 92nd Session, 2021, 25th Day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, March 15th, 2021. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. <laughs> reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is online. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. <clears throat> Second reading of House Files 1683. Second reading. Second reading of House Files 1762. Second reading of House Files 1865. Second reading. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. <clears throat> Winkler from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Thursday, March 18th, 2021, and establish the pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. House file number 1438, 333, and 652, and Senate file numbers 395 and 440. Introduction of bills. The following House files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House files 2248 through 2301. First reading, House files 2248 through 2301. There's a motion at the desk. <clears throat> Pursuant to Article 4, Section 19 of the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, doubt moves that the rule therein be suspended and an urgency be declared and that the rules of the House be so far suspended so that House Bill Number 2267 be given its second and third readings and be placed upon its final passage. The member from Isanti, the Minority Leader, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and members uh, appreciate uh, the time, uh, and we won't use a lot of it, but this is a very, very important issue that, that we feel needs to be talked about. Um, on Monday, uh, we talked about exempting PPP loans from taxes. Uh, today, uh, we want to bring a bill to the House floor and immediately take action. Uh, this is the governor's safe account uh, bill and, and would provide much needed funding for uh, neighboring law enforcement agencies that sent in uh, officers uh, for mutual aid in the event of a declared emergency. And, and I think we all know there is a potential for that. We saw it last summer and we saw the importance of this uh, last summer. Um, this is something that, that really frankly can't wait. Um, later in the week, uh, House Republicans will bring uh, a bill uh, for federal conformity on unemployment insurance, making sure that Minnesotans aren't taxed on those benefits, and also funding summer school. Uh, we think these are four issues that need urgent attention in the House of Representatives, and we mm -hmm. are bringing them forward uh, to force votes on them this week. Um, on this particular issue, uh, the SAFE Act, uh, tomorrow will be two weeks uh, since we gave an offer to the uh, majority party in this body, expecting an offer in return. I was told more than a week and a half ago now that we would see language. Uh, we still have not seen that. Um, in a very rare occurrence, uh, when this bill 
uh, the, the, the House Democrats tried to pass funding for law enforcement off of the House floor uh, for this purpose. They did not have the votes to pass a bill that was not a clean bill. So what we have before us is an opportunity to bring uh, House File 2267 to the floor. This is a clean bill with $35 million worth of funding uh, for neighboring law enforcement agencies that send uh, mutual aid into uh, a city that requests it as a result of uh, a, a declared state of emergency. Now, it's interesting, when this whole thing uh, got started and the governor proposed this idea, it seemed like everybody went to their corners and, and staked out an ideological position. House Republicans did not do that. What we did is we looked at the governor's proposal and we said, hey, what do we think is reasonable and what do we think this should look like? And what do we think ultimately will get signed into law? So we put forward this language and we have talked a lot about it since. In fact, in an editorial on February 19th, the Star Tribune endorsed our position. And that's not something that happens frequently in the state of Minnesota. But on this issue, it did. The title of that editorial, State House Republicans Have the Right Idea on Police Security Funding. And while they said that the police reforms are probably important, they said that they shouldn't be in this bill, that they should travel separately. And I don't want to discount the reforms that have been talked about, but we just don't believe they should be holding up much needed funding at this urgent time. That Star Tribune editorial concluded by saying, there is a rare opportunity here for House DFLers and Republicans to come together on public safety and offer a unified front. We urge them to take it. And I have heard broadly from Minnesotans that they don't want an issue like law enforcement funding to be held up for other things. This is something that is incredibly urgent, and I think we know uh, with the pending trial in the Chauvin case that things certainly could unfortunately get out of hand and these dollars could very well be needed in the near future. We also find ourselves in an interesting position in that it seems it's being difficult for the, the court to find jurors in this case in the current venue. A change of venue has been requested and the judge now has indicated today that he will rule on a change of venue on Friday. So a change of venue is possible and it may not be the city of Minneapolis that we're protecting. It may be Representative Wolgamott's district in St. Cloud. It may be Representative Liebling's district in Rochester. Or it could be another community. But the reality is House Republicans support this funding to keep people safe in the city of Minneapolis and we support this funding to keep people safe elsewhere if it's needed. But if a change of venue happens, believe me, this funding will be needed very quickly because those other cities have not had the opportunity to prepare for a trial in the way that Minneapolis has. So members, this is an urgent issue. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak about it for a couple of minutes here on the floor. I would urge you to, uh, to uh, vote in favor of this motion to declare an urgency. Let's immediately bring up this bill and let's immediately pass it and let's live up to what the Star Tribune editorial board has asked us for and let's keep Minnesotans safe and let's do it together. Thank you. The member from Ramsey, Representative Mariani. Thank you, Madam Speaker uh, and members. Uh, well, Madam Speaker and members, you know, it's interesting that uh, well over four weeks after the DFL majority brought this bill to the floor, after the other body uh, with their Republican leadership said it had no responsibility to provide for the safety of the people in the Twin Cities, after our state's law enforcement leaders had repeatedly met to begin the strong Minnesota tradition of collaboration and mutual assistance, 
after I offered an amendment to modify accountability measures of the bill that we brought rapidly uh, to the floor of the House, and that the majority passed that amendment, and as a result, removing the opposition of our state's law enforcement professional associations, who sent us all a letter uh, to that effect. And after not a single, not one, single Republican voted for that amended compromise, now the Republican minority is arguing there is an emergency, so we must act. Members, that's called creating a problem and then pretending to address it. Now we're hearing from our Republican minority that we can't wait, members. Well, four weeks ago, we in a majority, over four weeks ago, we in a majority said, we can't wait, we shouldn't wait. We should do the responsible thing then, now. We've, we have always said that it's responsible to craft legislation that meets the needs of Minnesotans in terms of both safety and accountability. We worked awfully hard to do that. And as I mentioned, uh, we worked uh, so well to do that, that our law enforcement prof professional associations removed their objections uh, to the bill. Members, here are the facts. We're in talks between the Senate and the House leadership on how to move forward with this legislation. But let's be clear, members, the House DFL majority clearly has demonstrated its strong desire to move forward to ensure that safety exists for all Minnesotans. Here's what's happening right now and what keeps getting in, the, in our way. There's an impasse with Republicans because they want to now approve funding without accountability. That's a false choice for Minnesotans to choose between safety and accountability. They also insist to exclude funds for state patrol and for BCA. Somehow, apparently, that makes Minnesotans safer. I disagree with that. Their approach doesn't have the support of law enforcement, nor the support of the cities that are impacted. We listen to the diversity of stakeholders from our cities, from our communities of color, from our regular uh, citizens, regardless of where they live and, and, and what their race and creed is, from law enforcement, and we created a good compromise well over four weeks ago. And the only thing that stood in the way of taking care of that at that time was the entire Republican Minority Caucus, not one members who stood to accept that compromise and make real the words that they are now articulating on how it's so critically important to provide safety right now. It has always been critically important. There is a way to do this that meets all of the important issues that are out there that do not uh, raise the specter of resistance from our law enforcement communities. And I'm just puzzled why the minority continues to not do that. So members, I, I oppose this effort um, on the part of the maker of the motion. The member from Wabasha, Representative Drzkowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, Representative Douch, for bringing forward uh, the, the resolution, the motion to bring this bill to the floor. Um, I remembered just a few days ago uh, as you castigated Representative Mortensen for uh, bringing forward a bill that didn't have a companion reference a Constitution that suggested it has no chance of passing. Have you read the Constitution, Representative Doubt? 
that's the reciprocal question for you today. Uh, but Madam Speaker and members, we have before us uh, again an effort uh, similar to the one that we entertained here several weeks ago uh, that, that brings forward a spending proposal in a situation that doesn't require it. We have a city of Minneapolis, which by the way, apparently more people are now divining the notion that uh, there's going to be a riot in Minneapolis because of an upcoming trial. I just can't comprehend that we as a body don't think more of the people of Minnesota than to expect there's going to be a riot. I am just dumbfounded at that to begin with. But members, Madam Speaker, more than that, we have before us a bill to again, uh, bring forward uh, a motion to spend money to patch a void in leadership that exists in Minnesota, in the governor's office and in the mayor's office of the largest city of the state and in the city council of the, of the largest city in the state. Throw money at it uh, in order to bring forward political opportunism to make us look good. Look at we're, we're dealing with this, we're spending money. Well, members, Madam Speaker, the federal government's spending money too. As a matter of fact, they just brought forward a bill and passed it signed by the president into federal law that spends $4.9 billion in Minnesota, sends it to our state. 2.6 billion are going to state government, 2.3 billion or something like that to local governments, including uh, Madam Speaker, Representative Doubt, members, uh, for the city of Minneapolis, $281.49 million. The city of St. Paul, $171.82 million. The city of Rochester, $17 million. The city of St. Cloud, $15.72 million. The list goes on for every municipality, every city, and every county in the state. There is money being showered across the state of Minnesota, and we have members and leaders in this house bringing forward a bill, the fastest thing they can do to bring the people's money and throw it at a problem and not even know how much money is going to be landing here from the federal government. I find this to be a lack of proper leadership all the way around. A race to political opportunism is not in the best interest of Minnesotans. It's in the worst interest of Minnesotans. Members, Madam Speaker, Representative Doubt, this may look good to you and, and to television, but you know what? It's not looking good to managing the people's money. Throwing money at a, a problem that hasn't even presented itself yet in order to, to look good politically when we don't even know how much of these billions and billions and billions of dollars are coming to Minnesota, where they're gonna land and what they're gonna be used for is irresponsible. We need to reject this motion and reject this notion that, that it's a problem with money. It's not a problem with money. The city of Minneapolis gets $150 million in local government aid every biennium. And again, they are in a race in the city of Minneapolis to build more parks than any place on the planet. And they've already accomplished it and they're building more. This isn't a problem with money. There's enough money already being spent in a variety of places. There's a whole bunch more of the people's money that's been taken from them that's gonna be landing here. They haven't, it hasn't even fallen from the federal sky yet onto the turf of the state of Minnesota and we're bringing forward a motion to spend more of the people's money. This isn't the way to go. Let's reject this motion. Let's find our let's find our common sense here and get a sense of where things are at so that we can bring back again responsibility to the people that sent us here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Isanti, Representative Johnson. Madam Speaker, members. I speak in support of this motion. This bill is important. The safety of the citizens of Minneapolis 
and the citizens all across this state is it's important. We are constitutionally mandated to protect the safety of the citizens of Minnesota. Now this bill, the original bill that uh, Representative Mariani was talking about, it went from, uh, House File 445 went from non-support by law enforcement groups to neutral. They did not support the bill that was being pushed forward. In fact, not one member, on, even though the majority is on the other side of the aisle, they could not pass the bill, and it was the governor's initiative. My bill that I'm bringing forward is a little different. Yes, it does have some of the policy in it. It does. But the policy that we can agree to, not, not nearly as far-reaching as the other policy, but it has some in it. There is some difference between uh, Representative Mariani's bill and this one. It's not the Commissioner of Public Safety deciding who gets what money and when. State agencies do not receive money from this fund because we can backfill them on the supplemental budget. This bill sends the money to the local jurisdictions so the local property taxpayers don't have to flip the bill. And it only goes into effect when a Chapter 12 emergency is called. And yes, it also, if departments from outside the states, whether it's Wisconsin, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, sends their officers to help us, we would pay them as well out of this fund. But it's unlikely right now that we'd ever have to. Because right now, because of the bill that we passed last, I believe it was last July, with the account, Peace Officers Accountability Bill, those states, already North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, have already said they will no longer send any officers for mutual aid into the state of Minnesota. We need to deal with that, and we need to deal with that quick. And this, this bill has a provision to delay some issues so they can actually come and help us. We have a lot of communities that rely on neighboring states and neighboring cities and other states to back their officers up. We have cities on the border that do not have 24-hour law enforcement, <coughs> but the city right across the border might be just a bridge like in Taylor's Falls and St. Croix Falls, where those officers come and help out for the safety of the citizens of Minnesota. But now they are no longer coming across this border into Minnesota. Now, the uh, allocation of the funds is going to be by a committee, a committee of the commissioner who's still on it, but two sheriffs and two police chiefs that represent both the metropolitan area of large cities and large counties, but also the small communities across this great state. It also requires the, the Commissioner of Public Safety to report to the legislature to let us know where the funds have gone. Also includes a declaration of policy and support of our peace officers, first responders, and frontline responders, our firefighters, our EMS. They are the ones running in, going into these situations to try to protect our, our lives, our property, and all of us. And again, it, uh, dealing with the Police Accountability Bill, it extends the implementation date from March 1st to September 1st, so all our officers can actually get trained on the new changes that went, in, went into effect March 1st and have not been trained on those. It's not fair to our law enforcement officers to have laws changed and not have an opportunity to 
especially laws that affect them dramatically, to understand them, learn them. In fact, Post Board finally sent out the rules and passed the rules of what's going to happen in mid to late February with a March 1st start date. Not enough time to train the officers. We have over 10,000 officers in the state that need that training. So I'm going to ask that you support this, this motion because it needs to be done. The eyes of Minnesota and especially the eyes of the entire nation and the world is looking at Minneapolis, what's going to happen. We need to prepare. And if there's a change of venue, there is not another city that's really prepared for that right now, without these funds, they can get things set up quickly. If the trial's moved up to, ends up being moved up to Duluth, Wisconsin's not going to send anybody help from some Superior to help the Duluth Police Department. If it's down in Rochester, I've talked to a number of sheriffs in Iowa, and it's very unlikely that they'll send anybody. And I feel sorry for those officers in Moorhead that have a long way for any assistance because Fargo helped Moorhead a lot. In fact, last time I was up in Moorhead, there was an incident, and the first squads there were Fargo PD, which are no longer coming. Members, this deals with the safety of the public, of every citizen in the state of Minnesota. Not just Minneapolis, not St. Paul, but it deals with the safety of every citizen, which is our constitutional responsibility. Law enforcement officers, they'll go help wherever they're called. It doesn't matter if they have a mutual aid agreement or not, they will go and help, go help. But this is something that needs to be done now, because I, as I said, the entire eyes of the world are watching Minnesota, Minneapolis, and what we do. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I'd also request a roll call. Representative Johnson requests a roll call. There's only 11 members in the chamber today, so members, if you would like to request a roll call, uh, please send uh, an email to hands at house.mn from your official email account. There are 15 hands. There will be a roll call. The member from Chisago, Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members, and thank you, Leader Doubt, for bringing this forward, and Representative Johnson for all your work on this. Um, you know, Representative Mariani told us that four weeks ago, the majority said this can't wait. It's really important. And yet here we are four weeks, and the majority hasn't passed a bill. They have not passed this relief. And one thing that I think many of us um, have discovered and, and over the last couple of months is that in talking to our different law enforcement agencies, we know that if they are asked, they will respond. They are not leaving any of their own on their own. They will respond. And so what this $35 million does is make sure that those responding agencies my officers from the Wyoming Police Department or the North Branch Police Department or the Chisago Lakes Police Department, that when they respond, they will be made whole. This isn't complicated, it's not rocket science. And it needs to be done. These agencies absolutely have to have the assurance that they will have the resources that they need. I want to touch just very quickly on another provision in the bill. As Representative Johnson said, there are a few policy, non-controversial policy provisions, and one of those is delaying the implementation of the, the deadly force policy. Um, I was actually just reading an article um, from 
Grand Forks from the Grand Forks Herald, indicating that, that a lot of law enforcement in their area told them that they found out about the changes, quote, less than two weeks before they went into effect. This is hugely problematic. I was contacted by one of my police chiefs just this week um, make, requesting that we make this delay. I happen to represent a border community. I represent uh, Chisago County. We are directly adjacent to St. Croix Falls on the other side of the river. And we rely on help from those officers in Wisconsin. And they have been notified. My departments have been notified right now that Wisconsin is no longer responding to calls in Minnesota. They will not come. This is a crisis for some of our border communities. We have to get this changed. We have to get this done. And we have to get it done now. This is not a problem that can wait until the end of May when we're doing all of our horse trading and all the negotiations are happening. This can't wait. We have Minnesota citizens right now who are vulnerable because of this deadline. This went into effect on March 1st. That means that they are already at risk of not having the support that they need from law enforcement. Like I said, in my community, that comes from Wisconsin, but we certainly know that there are other border communities across the state experiencing the same concern. Madam Speaker and members, I would request a thoughtful yes vote on this. It is time. We have to get this done. Thank you. The member from Hennepin, the Majority Leader, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, members uh, who are concerned about law enforcement response and mutual aid and the question of whether or not neighboring states will be sending law enforcement to help in your communities, I'm sure you very much regret your vote against this better version of the bill that came up some weeks ago. Representative Johnson gave a lot of reasons why it would have been a good idea to pass this bill. In fact, that's why I voted for it. It's why 63 Democrats voted for it. The mystery is why we couldn't even get five Republicans to vote for it. It was a bill supported by law enforcement. There was a letter at our desk that asked us to vote yes on the day that came forward. Now, there have been a number of uh, statements made by the maker of the motion that I think uh, require a response. First, that this bill as uh, House File 2267 is the Governor's SAFE Act. Not remotely true. Second, that House File 2267 is a clean bill. Not remotely true. Uh, next, that this is much needed funding at this point in time for Minneapolis and St. Paul. And as Representative Druskowski pointed out, there is a lot of money coming in to support communities, including for public safety. The funding is not urgent in this moment. In fact, the SAFE Act came to us at a time when there were not mutual aid agreements in place to prepare for the Chauvin trial. The concept was that we needed to put money on the table in order for law enforcement organizations in Minnesota to answer the call. We have fortunately learned that that was not an accurate assumption. Law enforcement communities, groups, and organizations from around Minnesota have entered mutual aid agreements with the cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. They are prepared for the trial, whatever the outcome is. And Representative Druskowski, it's not an assumption, it's preparation. So the urgency of January to get ready has passed. Representative Doubt in his motion also said that law enforcement money should not be held up for other things. The fact of the matter is, a version of this bill, which was what the governor requested, it was a bill that law enforcement requested us to pass, came to the floor and you voted no. It's a strange day when the House Republican Caucus decides that it wants to side with the Star Tribune editorial board over police officers, police chiefs, and sheriffs. This has been a test the last year of whether we want to be serious about responding to a pandemic, if we want to be serious about responding to civil unrest, 
re serious responding to systemic and deep-seated racism in our state, whether we want to build an economy that will work for Minnesotans, whether we want to invest in our workers, our families, and our communities. And all we have seen time after time after time are frivolous motions on the House floor to bring up bills that you have had multiple opportunities to support already. The grown-ups are still in charge, Minnesota. These kinds of motions this week will do nothing to divert us from the fact that we are here to govern. Members, vote no. We have work to do today. The member from Isanti, the Minority Leader, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members, and uh, thank you, Representative Winkler, uh, for your very creative speech. Uh, but unfortunately, your comments are not based in fact. And in fact, you stated that don't we wish we would have voted for your bill so that we wouldn't have had this uh, use of force issue where neighboring states' law enforcement won't respond to us. Well, in fact, that provision was not in your bill. You stated that law enforcement supported your bill. In fact, they did not. And that was the underlying issue with your bill. This is funding that law enforcement needs in the event, in the un untimely and, and unfortunate event that it's needed. They asked for this money. but they did not support your bill. And, and even the author of the bill admitted it in his speech just a few minutes ago when he said, we got them to neutral. We got them from being opposed to the bill to neutral. I wanna talk a little more about what the author of the bill said. He said that the bill that you attempted to pass off of the House floor was compromise language. Folks, it's not compromise when the extreme left negotiates with the far left. And at no time prior to that bill did you compromise with anybody on this side of the aisle in this chamber. And it seems to me that since you didn't have enough votes to pass your own bill off the House floor, which by the way in my 10 years here in the legislature I've only seen three times, it seems to me that if you didn't have the votes to pass your bill off the House floor, you probably could have compromised with us and actually passed some language. Two weeks ago tomorrow, I gave language in this chamber to the Speaker of the House, making a couple of changes to your language. I was told that was on a Thursday. I was told on Sunday, that you'd be making an offer back to us. That's over a week and a half ago. I have still seen nothing. But now we know why we have seen nothing. Because on this floor, on this day, on this issue, the majority leader of the Minnesota House of Representatives, Ryan Winkler, stated that this funding is not urgent. And while I've never hoped more that words wouldn't come back to haunt someone, Believe me, Representative Winkler, I will remember that you said that. And I guarantee you that our law enforcement community will also remember that you said that. And aren't you cute when you say, Republicans have decided to side with the Star Tribune. Nope, that's not what happened at all. And in fact, what did happen is that Republicans in this chamber showed the leadership necessary and the leadership that Minnesotans expect, that even the Star Tribune recognized it and endorsed our position. And I appreciate Representative Draskowski's comment that we don't know if this money will be needed. I apologize that your memory is so short that you can't remember last May. And if this money is not needed, it will not be spent. But last May, we saw how our governor will react in a state of emergency when Minnesota citizens are in danger. And we saw how the leadership in the city of Minneapolis will react when citizens of the, Minis of the state of Minnesota are in danger. And I'm sorry. 
in a time when there is such a lack of leadership from Democrats in the state of Minnesota, someone must step up and show some leadership. Our law enforcement community needs to know that they will be paid if they put themselves in danger and at risk while keeping people safe. And we need to know that that money is available right away so that we don't have a four or five day delay while hundreds of Minnesota businesses are burned in one of our largest cities. In all of my time here in the legislature, I've probably never seen a no-brainer like this one. One-time money. By the way, we have a $4.2 billion surplus right now. I think of 100% one-time money. $4.2 billion. This bill's $35 million. For one of the most basic core functions of state government, which is public safety. Such a core function of state government, it's defined in our Constitution. You want to find some cuts somewhere else of something that's not defined in our Constitution? I'll gladly put up the votes. But right now, with a $4.2 billion surplus, I'm not going to believe the excuses of the majority party who are literally saying on this House floor today that this funding is not urgent. Members, this is the second opportunity this week that House Democrats have passed up the opportunity to show leadership. It won't be the last. The slowest start in recorded history. The least number of bills passed off the House floor. At a time that I thought I would never see. When we're reeling from a pandemic, the governor has closed down most Minnesota businesses for some period during the last year, shuttering livelihoods of many Minnesotans. And there has never been a time that I know of in our history where Minnesotans needed us to step up and show leadership. But Democrats in the Minnesota House have failed to do so. And they can make up any excuse they want to. But even the Star Tribune, who's usually their best ally, can see through the BS. So members, let's do what we know is right and bring this bill up and pass it into law. Because nobody's buying your story that this isn't urgent and nobody's buying your story that you acted four weeks ago. I know that leadership is sometimes difficult But I can't explain this session why Democrats are paralyzed. And I choose that word very carefully. The inaction by Democrats is staggering. In a normal year, you'd say, ah, we're just off to a slow start. Minnesota businesses who took federal funds to keep more Minnesotans employed while many of their businesses were shuttered are getting an unexpected tax bill because Democrats in the Minnesota House want to profit off of their misfortune. Minnesotans who were out of work and received an unemployment supplement from the federal government will have a very shocking and unexpected tax bill to pay because Democrats in the Minnesota House are paralyzed and not taking action. Minnesota schools aren't going to be able to plan for summer school. But thankfully, we will offer a plan that will give them some one-time resources at their discretion 
provided we have kids and teachers in classrooms. Because believe it or not, our governor for the last year, despite science and data, has kept children out of classrooms at the request of the teachers union. It's unconscionable. And maybe the most important issue is this one. In a lack of leadership by our governor and the leadership of the city of Minneapolis, Minnesotans were not kept safe last summer. We saw businesses, buildings, and homes burn, burn to the ground with no response. That was the Democrat leadership showing how they would act in the state of emergency. So we're bringing forward a proposal to make sure that law enforcement agencies are funded so that if that happens again, they can act quickly and they can know that they will be reimbursed. And today on the House floor, it's Democrats, again, who are paralyzed and standing in the way of that funding for law enforcement. Members, I think we all know the right thing to do. Please vote yes. The clerk will take the roll on the motion. Members who are voting remotely, please vote. The clerk will call the names of those who have not voted yet. <clears throat> Backer. Backer votes yes. Backer aye. Berg. Berg no. Berg no. Davids. David's aye. David's aye. Daphne. Daphne, no. Daphne, no. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Detmer, aye. Draskowski. Draskowski, no. Draskowski, no. Erickson. Aye. Erickson, aye. Feist. Feist, no. Feist, no. Fisher. Fisher, no. Fisher, no. Frazier. Frazier, no. Frazier, no. Gomez. Gomez, no. Gomez, no. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, aye. Grunhagen, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Houseman. Houseman, no. Houseman, no. Heinzman. Heinzman, aye. Heinzman, aye. Jordan. Jordan, no. Jordan, no. Lucero. Yes. Lucero, aye. Mariani. Mariani, no. Mariani, no. Mason. Mason, no. Mason, no. Mecklen. Mecklen, aye. Mecklen, aye. Sandell. Mecklen. Sandell. Sundin. No. Sundin, no. Swazinski. 
Swazinski, I. Swazinski, I. Zhang T. Zhang T. No. Sandel. Sandel, no. Sandel, no. The clerk will close the roll. There being 58 ayes and 74 noes, the motion does not prevail. House file number 2267 is being referred to the Public Safety and Criminal Justice Reform, Finance and Policy Committee. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial -controver motions at the House desk and online. If there is no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Wolgamott moves that House File Number 1203, now on the General Register, be re-referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. Represent Representative Wolgamott. Madam Speaker, I rise to move that House File 1203 be re-referred from the General Register to the Committee on Ways and Means. House File 1203 is a bill to extend the COVID-19 workers' compensation presumption for Minnesota's first responders, for public safety workers, for health care workers, for our child care providers, from May 1st of 2021 to December 31st of 2021. I spoke with the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, and she is in full support of this motion. And members, I ask that you join her with a yes vote. Any discussion on the Wolgamot motion? Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and uh, the General Register is where bills uh, go to uh, before they come here to the House floor. So uh, currently there are three COVID-related bills on the General Register, and I think our complaint has been that we're not getting bills that Minnesotans need to the floor. Um, so Representative Wolgamot, if you'd yield for a question. He will yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to confirm that we're uh, reducing the number of COVID-related bills on the General Register and actually moving them further away from passage. Is that your intent? Representative Wolgamot. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Representative Doubt, um, after we uh, heard this House File 1209 in the Committee on Labor and Industry, um, a deal was struck between the labor community and the business community on the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council. And so as part of that, uh, we're, the bill we passed last year required a, deport, a report from Dolly on how the presumption worked. Uh, it was determined that we need that same report when we come back next year to know how the extension has worked and whether or not we need to take additional action. So this motion we refer comes from the hard work of the business community and of the labor community. Um, we're seeing this to ways and means so that we can get, uh, go through the fiscal impact of this report. So yes, we're doing this motion to reflect the will of the labor community, of the business community, and most importantly, to make sure that we have the information that we need to fully support Minnesota's frontline responders who are on the battle lines of this pandemic. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Thank you for that. I just was looking for that confirmation, which you did, that we're moving this further from passage. Um, I just want to remind folks who are paying attention at home, there are no bills on the General Register to exempt PPP loans from taxes. There are no, lo no bills on the General Register to exempt uh, the UI benefits that Minnesotans receive from the federal government from taxes. There are no bills on the General Register to fund law enforcement, and there are no bills on the General Register to fund uh, uh, summer school. Um, so today we're actually taking one of three bills that's on the General Register to deal with COVID off, and now there remain only two. So thanks, members. If you're paying attention at home, just wanted to make sure uh, that you're paying attention to what the Democrats are not doing here in the chamber. All those in favor of the Wolgamont motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. Becker Finn moves to House file number 1404. Now on the General aye. Register, be re-referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. The member from Ramsey, Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, House File 1404 uh, had an unexpected fiscal note, and so uh, we need to bring it back to ways and means to address that there properly. Representative Becker Finn, you cut out at the end when you maybe were indicating what the bill is about. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's the uh, Judiciary Committee uh, data omnibus bill, and there was an unexpected uh, fiscal note for one of the bills included, and so we're bringing it back to ways and means to address it properly. 
All those in favor of the Becker Finn motion, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. please say no. Aye. The motion prevails. <coughs> Keeler moves that House Bill number 2124 be recalled from the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice Reform, Finance, and Policy and be re referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Finance, and Civil Law. The member from Clay, Representative Keeler, to your motion. Um, yes, Madam Chair, that's my motion. This is a bill um, for an act relating to human rights. It's a creation of the Office of Murdered and Missing Indigenous Relatives. Due to um, the Chapter 13 reference and the deadline timeline, uh, we need this to be sent over to Judiciary. I've talked to both chairs and they're in agreement with this motion. All those in favor of the Keeler motion, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. please say aye. no. The motion prevails. Oh. <clears throat> Francis is introducing House Resolution Number Four, a House resolution condemning Chinese treatment of and human rights violations. The resolution is being referred to the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Announcements. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, March 18, 2021. Representative Winkler moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, March 18, 2021. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please aye. say no. The no. motion prevails. No. Representative no. Winkler. Madam no. Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. No. Representative Winkler moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. The oh. motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 3.30 Thursday, March 18, 2021.